Earth has had a dramatic history. It's been around for over four and a half billion years, and in that time, it's gone from a flaming ball collecting dust to the advanced civilization that we see around us today. The story of the Earth is one that includes many extreme changes and millions of very tiny ones to bring about the abundance of life that we now take for granted. In this video, we're going to detail the story, pinpointing the key changes that led us to where we are right now. Around four and a half billion years ago, Earth grew from a cloud of dust and rocks surrounding a sun much younger than the one that gives us life today. These rocks collided and eventually they had enough mass to establish a gravitational pull, drawing in all nearby debris and forming what we've called the Earth. Soon after, the moon is thought to have been formed when a rock the size of a planet collided with this newly formed Earth. The debris from this giant collision condensed into what we now see as the moon. The first two periods of time that the Earth existed in were known as the Hadean and Archean eons. During the Hadean era, the planet was far hotter than it is today to the point where it was essentially a floating ball of molten core, but during the Archean Eon, the planet cooled considerably which would have allowed for some forms of life. This life would have been very primitive as the lack of ozone layer at the time wouldn't have allowed for the kind of life that we're used to, but instead a primordial form would have existed. Some scientists even speculate that life could have begun during the early Hadean Eon, as far back as 4.4 billion years ago, in hydrothermal vents below the Earth's surface. These are all theories, however, as no one is completely sure when life started on Earth. The oldest confirmed fossils of single-celled microorganisms are 3.5 billion years old. Primordial life may have begun a bit earlier than that, as we've already speculated, but probably not while huge rocks were raining down on Earth as they did early in its life in a period of impacts known as late heavy bombardment. Life may have begun in the vents that we explored earlier, or in open water, or on land. The truth is we don't know, and we also don't know what it looked like. We're used to photosynthesis being associated with modern plant life, but it was the key to life far earlier than that. The sun provides our life today, and this was also the case 3.5 billion years ago, as some of the early microorganisms evolved a way to use the energy from sunlight to make sugars out of simpler molecules. This is photosynthesis. The difference with these early organisms is that they weren't releasing the oxygen as a waste product like our greenery does for us. Around 3 billion years ago, the way that we're familiar with our Earth's crust moving was starting to take shape. Plate tectonics is responsible for the constant movement we feel with earthquakes, when one plate shifts against the other, with one being at the mercy of the planet's molten core. This period marked the first continent in existence, which was nicknamed Ur. This supercontinent was the only landmass on Earth and would subsequently split out to produce a world map that we're now familiar with. We take for granted the breathable air that we've always known, but for about the first half of the Earth's life there was barely any oxygen in the planet's atmosphere at all. At about 2.4 billion years ago, bacteria began harnessing sunlight to make sugar from carbon dioxide and water, completing the photosynthesis model just like green plants today. These microbes produced oxygen as a waste product, but life as we know it wasn't the first thing to exist following this new development. Instead, this oxygen may have caused the entire planet to freeze over into a snowball Earth as a result of oxygen taking away the greenhouse gas methane from the air. Then things started to get a little more complicated. As we looked at earlier, the first organisms were simple cells like modern bacteria. But following this, creatures known as eukaryotes were complex organisms that developed lots of specialized equipment within their cells. They also had a new source of energy sausage-shaped objects called mitochondria that were once free-living bacteria but which were absorbed in a process called endosymbiosis. This represented a huge development in life as every animal and plant you've ever seen is a eukaryote. But bear in mind that this process was still happening very slowly and can't be dated accurately. It's thought that between 2 to 1 billion years ago all of this was developing. Around this time, but specifically between 1.8 billion and 800 million years ago, the fossil record doesn't look very interesting. However, during this time, the first mating of organisms started to happen as opposed to them simply splitting into two. 
It's hard to say exactly when this happened, but it was definitely going on 1.2 billion years ago, as there have been fossils of red algae found from that time that were clearly forming specialized sex cells such as spores. Multicellular life started to really develop during this period as well. But not before another two big freezes for the planet. Between 835 and 635 million years ago, Earth rose over again, twice. This second snowball period may have triggered the evolution of the first complex animals as the first complex organisms developed, Ediacarans, appeared soon after Earth's second snowball era. At this point, Earth's life remained largely underwater while plants started to thrive around 500 million years ago. Then, the first mass extinction came. The water cooled dramatically and ice sheets spread from the poles. The ensuing ice age is called the Andean Saharan, based on where its evidence came from. 85% of marine species, which represented most species at the time, were wiped out. But this wasn't enough to stop life from taking over the land. Insects were first, about 400 million years ago. Then animals, like the tectolic, which was a fish that looked a bit like a salamander, were next. This led to amphibians, reptiles, and mammals. About 320 million years ago, reptiles dominated the planet as they evolved to have tough, scaly skin and laid eggs with hard shells that did not have to be left in water. But again, just as life was starting to develop, extinction set it back again. The Permian extinction was the worst mass extinction in the planet's history, obliterating up to 96% of animal species. We're not entirely sure why it happened, but massive volcanic eruptions might have been to blame. The aftermath allowed the first dinosaurs to be evolved. Around the same time, around 200 million years ago, the first mammals started roaming the Earth. Early mammals, such as Morganucodon, were small and shrew-like, and probably only active at night. This might have led them to evolve warm-bloodedness, which gave the ability to keep their body temperature constant. Along with these creatures as well as the flourishing dinosaurs, the first birds started to appear. Birds evolved from feathered dinosaurs. The most famous early bird, Archaeopteryx, lived 150 million years ago. Following this was the famous mass extinction of the dinosaurs. Around 65 million years ago, a huge meteorite smashed into what is now Mexico. The explosion was devastating, but the longer-term effects were worse. Sunlight was blocked by dust, and in the darkness, Earth suffered its fifth and last mass extinction. On top of the dinosaurs, pterosaurs and giant marine reptiles were also wiped off the face of the planet. This led to what we know now as the modern world. 65 million years might seem like a long time to say modern, but considering the Earth is 4.5 billion years old, then in the grand scheme of things, it's like yesterday. In that time, mammals evolved the ability to nourish their young inside their wombs using a placenta, just like modern humans. Plants developed what is known as C4 photosynthesis to deal with harsher climates. And the first hominid, known as Sahelanthropus chidensis, lived about 7 million years ago. This then paved the way for humans to exist and thrive on a planet rich in resources and livable conditions, with Homo sapiens existing only around 200,000 years ago. In terms of the Earth's story, we're very young indeed. So this is a brief insight into the story of Earth. Is this the greatest story ever told? Surely it's the longest? Let us know in the comments. And if you like this video, give us a thumbs up and subscribe to Brain Impact. Thanks for watching.